Hey guys, welcome back to the sewing room. Now today, I'm just going to be peeling around and working on a couple things. Um, one thing is the sew along I'm doing with dandelion stitches. I'm going to work on my next five blocks and get those done. And in the process of doing those blocks, I had some scrap. And I thought, well, I want to do something with the scrap. And I was just, I just kept sewing. I just wanted to keep sewing. I've done the five blocks and I wanted to keep sewing. So I made a little mini quilt. Now I've been watching a lot of Lori Holt videos. And she does like a lot of mini quilts, but her mini quilts are like mini, mini, teeny, tiny squares. I don't even know how she sews these one and a half inch squares. Um, I cut mine down to two and a half inch squares because I had jelly roll strips. So I made little two and a half inch squares. Look how cute this is. Um, it could be like a, a doll's quilt or a table topper or it could be like a mat for your sewing machine. And I wanted something red with a pop to just go on the back. And this is this is just like something crafty. Um, I'm probably not going to gift this to anybody. It's going to be mine. This is Walmart. This is fabric from Walmart. I happen to have a, um, a yard piece of navy blue. So we were in Walmart um, the other night and I was looking, I remember this had this really cute red polka dot in it. So I grabbed two fat quarters of this cute red polka dot and I have one open laying up here that I need to iron. So I opened this one. It is perfectly big enough to be the back without having to um, piece the other one together. That's, I was just kind of like, do I have enough? I just need to iron this and we're going to use this for the back. So I'm going to get that done today, hopefully. I don't think my iron's hot enough yet. And nope, that's not hot enough yet. And we're going to work on our five squares, which shouldn't take me but a minute because after doing the first five, um, it's pretty easy. It's like a very simple log cabin block. And then the next thing I want to work on is I want to do some sample squares from this pattern. Now, when I say sample squares, I have this. My wonderful hubby bought me this. And I have not even opened it yet, as you guys can see. And before I open this and cut into it, I want to know what I'm doing before I wreck <laughs> my um, Lori Holt fabric. So, um have that this is a lori holt pattern i didn't even really pay that any attention when i bought this pattern but it does say it right here lori holt i just like the star pattern and this pattern is gingham star and it does give you like three different colorways it gives you might give you four i can't remember this one is like for springtime and it tells you all the um the fabrics that she used this one is more patriot patriotic this one is halloween i mean i thought that was really really cool and then you have a um a chris to me this is not christmasy but it's chris it says christmas um and then it gives you all the fabrics that she used so i want to do a practice square and I'll use some fat quarters or something. I'll have to dig me out some fat quarters or some scrap or whatever and try piecing one of these squares and practice first, if you know what I mean. Um, I just feel better if I've, you know, like tried it once with some just scrappy fat fabric or some fat quarters that I can easily get my hands back on. There we go, my iron's hot and um just do like a practice run do you guys do that does anybody do a practice run of something that's a little more complicated than you're used to doing um because like i said every quilt i'm trying to do or not every quilt i like the ones that are this is a quick and easy pattern yay <laughs> you know try to do something a little bit harder just to get the experience to get the knowledge to get the hands on and um learn you know get better so i do want to do like a practice run of that at least get it cut today i may not get it sewed today but at least 
get it cut today and here are some more squares that i have been working on these are actually all all done um but i like to find this is daybreak by moda um i'm trying to find another charm pack of this and I found some online. Um, I'll just have to order another one. They're kind of, I guess, maybe they don't make it anymore. I don't know. Because um, it's not really ready available. And I just had it stored in this old cardboard box. So I'm going to trash that. Because I was at Walmart when I bought the fabric. And I saw these for like $7. So... I bought these to start storing some of my stuff in. And I've been tr slowly trying to clean this up behind me. Because um, it is a catch-all for everything. And like this back here. This is a giant tackle box that my hubby bought me. When I was making a lot of beaded jewelry and like beaded decorations. And I have one tied up there, but it's tied. I can't get it down. Um... And it's got all my beads in it, like all my jewelry making things. And it's a huge tackle box. And it used to sit up under this desk. But fabric has taken its place. <laughs> so, um, I bought some of these shoe boxes. That's what they are. They're shoe boxes. And I'm going to have to um, probably put them across the top. I will clean out off the top of that um, shelf. Shannon, use your words. <laughs> the shelf. And um, stack these across the front and um, maybe get some stickers and just put, you know, what they are. I don't know yet. Still working on it. But I have been slowly trying to kind of clean this out. But I'm going to use one of these shoe boxes right now. I'll set the other ones down here for now. To um, put those squares in. I know they fit better in that box, but that box is kind of like on its last legs. But that is not bad. I mean, that'll work. And they're nice and safe and away from the dust and everything else. I do have cats. I have two that stay in the house full time. Two that come in and out. Pedro and, and um, Pumpkin. You guys have not seen Pumpkin. She is a semi-feral kitty. She will let me and my husband like um, pet her. And I can pick, I've can i picked her up. I think my hubby's picked her up one time and brought her inside. But she's still kind of semi-feral. Very timid. Um, she does really good in the house. I was really surprised. She doesn't mess with anything. Um... She just lays in her little bed, she just meow and wants her food. And then in the morning, she goes back outside. And I think she's still in here. She goes in the spare bedroom, which looks like a storage room, kind of like this one. Um, and she'll come out later in the afternoon. And I'm like, where you been all day? <laughs> mm. I'm drooping. All right, so I'm going to get this guy sandwiched. And I think I have enough batting. That um, I can make this work. I have a bunch of scrap here I can sew together. So no biggie. And uh, I'm going to get this sandwiched. And another thing I wanted to show you. I guess this is kind of like a show and tell. I ordered a walking foot for my genome. My genome. I have a walking foot for my singer. Which is right there. That baby's like 30 plus years old. I know it's got to be because I'm 50. I'll be 51 in April. And my parents got that for me when I was in my 20s. So it's got to be pushing 30. So it did come with a little spacer, little spacer bar. I've not even opened this yet. So I need to try it on the machine to make sure it, it works. And um, do I need to send it back to Amazon? So we're going to be playing with this guy today too. I gotta figure out how to put it on my machine. I don't think this is gonna fit my machine. Yeah, it will. I just got, okay. Cause mine has the snap foot, but I do also see the little screw where I can take the foot 
completely off. So it should it should be fine. All right, guys, I am going to get this going. This must fit in here, yes, like that. I'm not ready to use that yet, but there it is. Um, and uh, I'll see you back in a minute. Okay, so my walking foot that I bought that said fits a Janome, it didn't fit. Um, well, it fit. It's just when I lowered down the foot, it didn't come all the way down. So the um, the length from top to bottom is too short. So when I lo lowered it down, it didn't even touch like the base of my sewing machine. So that'll be going back to Amazon. And I'm, I'm sad because I was really wanting that to work. Um, I am still going to try to uh, just quilt this without it. And uh, I just put a few pins in it to hold everything together. I'm gonna put a few more pins in it and um, we'll see if it bunches up too much. I don't know, we're gonna find out with a regular foot. Let's see what it does. I'm gonna scoot you over, turn you down this way, turn you over this way. So I just put a regular foot back on there. I'm sad guys, that was sad. I really was hoping, um, I'm gonna start in the middle and just do a few blocks and i'm actually just going to use my foot the side of my foot here as a guide that's what i usually do and i want to turn my machine down Actually, I turn it down a little bit more and I'm just going to um, go like on the insides of these squares. Okay. Hold this up. I have a bookshelf back here. And I need to do something with that little bookshelf because it gets in my way when I'm sewing. So this is what I'm just going to do. I kind of went a little bit further on that one. Let me go back. Try not to stab myself with any pins. I need to get like the little basting. And I am going to back up one stitch just to tie that down. So yeah, that worked out. That worked out fine. So that's what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go around the insides of all these little squares. I know that's going to take a while, but it's okay. All right. I'm off today. I am going to take this foot back so I can get a refund on it. Like I said, try not to stab myself. And that's why you use safety pins, not regular pins. I did not feel like safety pinning everything down. <laughs> this was such a small little project. I just pinned it. One more. It'll be fine. So that's what I'm going to do, guys. I'm going to just continue to go around. And I'll show you when I have it all quilted down. I'm down to my last square. And that worked really good. Not, not as good as I think it would have done with a walking foot. Um, and I've kept all my pins in in case I wanna do any extra quilting. But, um, it did really good for just like a little simple table topper. Ouch. 
extra pin. Gotta be careful in pins. Last one, and then we just need to snip some threads. And I'm going to use the same red polka dot. I don't want this to kind of bond up. I'm going really slow. Going back up like two stitches. And there we go. So I've went around all my squares and quilted inside the squares. I think it turned out really cute, guys. What do you think? So now I just need to cut some binding. Trimming threads. And I need to trim the back. But here's the back. So you got all your little all your little squares. Um, there's only a couple places that looks like the thread kind of bunched up but that's no big deal we're just going to snip it and i am happy happy with what i did with my scraps okay there's a couple more that can be trimmed i'll get those It is fun. Little bitty threads, just little bitty threads. All right, pick you up and sit you back where you go. Now I'm going to trim around this edge. My iron's probably gotten cold. I knocked my box over. You know, if I don't knock something over, it's not a video. There it goes. <laughs> I want a pegboard. I want my hubby to make me a pegboard to hang like my rulers up on. Okay, so I am going to straighten up this edge. And I'm going to scoot you over just a hair. I did change my rotary blade, so there should be no problem cutting this. Just get it done quilts. She always says, if you don't remember when you changed it, then it's time to change it. I'm going to try to line up my lines here to stay straight. Okay. Well, maybe, maybe not. Thank you. Just line up this edge. Lining up lines to keep them pretty well parallel. So what do you guys have on your sewing machine today? Are you guys working on anything? Or are you just hanging out with me? Um, what you guys doing today? And I do want a new um, rotary cutter. This one is old and it loosens up. So I have to constantly keep like tightening it up. The side got a little short right there. But um, binding will get it. I mean, I could take just a hair a bit more. There we go. And then get this sort evened up. My mat has scooted up. There we go. Over time. All 
All right. And that was using scrap batting too. I had a um a bag of scrap that had pretty good sized pieces. This is from the last quilt I had quilted, which was the autumn quilt I sent to my long arm lady, Miss Juliet last stitch. So I just pieced the two biggest two of the bigger pieces together and um voila, we have quilt uh enough to quilt it with. All right, so now I just need to cut my binding, and I have another fat quarter here. Walmart, guys, I know a lot of people don't like the Walmart fabric. Um, let me know down below if you qu if you quilt with it. How do you like it? Like I said, this is just like a funsy project. Get me some water. Stay hydrated, people. And um, let me know. Do you use it? For just crafting little crafty sewing projects and like i said this is just going to be like a little table topper or maybe even a pad for my sewing machine i don't know yet it was just something fun to do and use up my scraps and and these are only like a dollar at walmart there's this piece of sticker right there and i want it off there we go can you not find a better way to sticker these, Walmart? Please. All right. So I'm going to get this one ironed, and I'm going to cut... Um, I might cut just two-inch strips on this one, not two and a half, and see if I can get it bound that way. Um, I'm usually doing two and a half. That's what I've... And I'm not bound a lot of quilts. I mean, only a couple. So, two and a half inch I'm comfortable with because it's a little bit bigger. So, we're going to get this guy ironed. We're gonna get some of these rulers out of my way. And we'll be back and put the binding on. Okay, I, okay, I have my binding on. Oh, look how cute this is. And I'm going to flip it over. And we are going to take our clips and I'm going to start here at the top and just fold this over and start clipping. Can you guys see that? And I just did a little fold right here to before it stopped and started. I know some people sew it, some people do a miter um i just did a little fold and tucked it in and yep there's that <laughs> and i'm just going to use these clips and i'm going to space them kind of far apart now i kind of wish i had did a two and a half but it is okay it is going to be fine it's going to work how people do these little teeny tiny bindings i don't know but like i said i just have to practice and I am going to take my iron and kind of press that down in between these sections and then put more clips. Just kind of get it flattened down a little bit so that will help me when I'm sewing. So I just took my iron and just kind of patted it down right there. The corners I'll miter here in a minute I'm just trying to get this guy rolled over put one in the middle one on the end one on the end and again I'm just gonna take my iron and I'm just kind of holding it over giving it a little bit of press just so it kind of memory you know that's what i'm doing guys that easy and then we're going to attempt to get this guy so down if it's not perfect again it's fine it's mine but it is a learning experience 
And the more I practice, the better I will get. That's the way I look at it. And again, I'm just going to tap these areas just a little bit with some steam and iron just to give it a little bit of this is where I'm supposed to go, you know, this is where I'm supposed to be. <laughs> Gonna keep clipping and and I will get those corners. My corners is where I definitely need practice, tons of practice um, getting those corners. So for the corners, start here and take some pins. This is where I definitely need the most like practice. They're not going to be perfect. That's okay. It is okay. As long as I am learning. And this one's got a little bit of bulk up underneath here. I'm actually going to cut a little bit of this fabric and batting away. Don't cut your threads. Okay. That's better. Okay, there's still a little bit of bulk, but I think I can get that. And again, these corners are not going to be anywhere near perfect. Making sure I did not cut my, my threads. <laughs> this one's going to be ornery, but it's fine. We'll pin you this way. Last one. A little bit of that bat out in this corner right here. It's better. It's better. Not perfect, but better. I mean, as long this is on the back, nobody's going to see it. Okay, now I'm going to add a few more clips and then we will run around and tack it all, tack it all down. Okay guys, this is my finished mat. What do you think? So I did just end up kind of folding my corners over. The miters were so small, it was just giving me a fit, but still not bad. Um... And they're, like I said, they're going to be on the back. I did um, redo one seam over here. I broke it loose and redid. Was it this seam? See, now I don't even know because it. Yes, this is where my um, fabric met up right there. So I did end up redoing that seam. Um, and it, I like it better. But there we go, guys. There is my little extra project made out of scraps from my squares or scraps from my um um star watch quilt ah. turn you guys back up and try not to mess everything up this is my thread shirt <laughs> i know i shouldn't wear black when i'm sewing but uh, this is just like a um 
lay around a lounge shirt you get like with pajamas it says champagne is always the answer not always a cup of coffee is always the answer or a cup of tea but yeah super happy with this little project and um i'll see you guys on the next one